Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the Orient for Solutions Limited business update call. From the senior management, we have with us today Mr. Ashish Rai, Vice Chairman and Director, Mr. Vipul Parma, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Ninat Kelkar, Company Secretary. Please note that today's call is being held to discuss the Interact DX acquisition for which the release has been uploaded on the exchanges yesterday. We request participants to restrict their questions related to this. Before we begin the call, I would like to mention that some of the statements made during the course of today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties, including those related to the future financial and operating performances, benefits and synergies of the company's strategies, future opportunities and growth of the market of the company's services and solutions. At this moment, all participants are in listen-only mode. A question and answer session will be conducted towards the end of the opening remarks by the management. At that time, you may click the raise hand icon from the toolbar or type your questions in the chat box. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand over the conference to Mr. Ashish Rai from Orient for Solutions. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashish. Hi. We. I'm sure some of you have seen yesterday the board approved and we announced the transaction to um, acquire. In track DX from Trejhara. Uh, Trejhara is a related entity uh, to us by virtue of being a spin off from Orient Pro uh, several years back. Uh, so, the objective of the call is to explain the the, the transaction, provide any clarifications that uh, you know the, the, the broader investor community may have around it. Uh, let me start with an overview of of you know the business and the, and the transaction for the next few minutes and and then we can jump into the questions and, um, and, and see what uh, needs more detail um, right so uh, the, so uh, you know in a nutshell if i was to describe this um, we are very excited about um, this uh, you know essentially the digital engagement business that we uh, that we take over uh, one this significantly enhances the solution footprint that we have in the banking and insurance space which as as, as many of you know is sort of a target segment for us um, right so we feel very good about um, the the existing client base that we get which is essentially the um, the top players especially in the Indian market on both the banking as well as the insurance side um, right the second thing um, uh, you know for us is uh, we feel very very good we um, in many ways, you know, um, Indian market is actually ahead of most of the world when it comes to digital engagement. We feel very good that using Orion Pro's um, sales channel outside of India and using the um, relationships we have, using the partnerships that we have, we can expand the business globally in a very, very significant way. Um, right. So um, the, the the sort of opportunity size uh, for us in terms of future is, is actually uh, very large overall in terms of the revenue profile, margin profile of the business. It is very, very similar to the software businesses that Orion Pro as a whole has. So that sort of fits in very, very well um, immediately sort of accretive in terms of EBITDA and so, so start contributing to Orion Pro's profits from Q3, right? So we see sort of significant, not just the revenue synergy, the the, the ability to expand um, on the earnings side. Um, if you jump into the, the, the product for a bit um, overall, right? So um, essentially there is, uh, Niran, maybe just change the slide uh, to the next one. So essentially there is four major components to the product. It is a it is a complete digital engagement suite, um, uh, sort of targeted specifically towards, uh, you know, especially towards banks and, and and insurance providers. So one part is the uh, sort of content management piece when it comes to all kinds of communication, you know, sort of customer communications, which is the end clients of these banks and insurance companies, um, be able to um, sort of make the passive interaction with the customer a lot more interactive when it comes to things like you know um, uh, monthly statements annual statements portfolio analytics things like that be able to really allow the banks to uh, do interactive marketing and go out to the wider customer and prospect base so so from being a passive cost center that most statements are make it a revenue center for the bank so there is a immediate roi um, that a bank or insurance institution would see uh, when it comes to it and then essentially uh, you know uh, be able to manage all aspects of the customer 
interaction around it through that customer communication hub um, that we talk about it, right? So, so a very powerful offering in terms of um, sort of upping the game on digital engagement when it comes to a large bank or a large financial institution that deals with a, a lot of clients, especially on the retail side, right? Uh, if we move one more slide um, forward. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so essentially, Sweet, as a, you know, if you look at the picture on the left, uh, what that tells you is be able to handle essentially all the channels that you would want to get to your customer rate, whether it's a web channel, whether it's mobile, whether it's an actual print channel, right? So, so be able to track and bring everything together, numerous use cases, um, any point of interaction that you can think a financial institution is, has uh, with its end client, we can play a role in terms of making that conversation with the customer a lot more interactive, right? Which is, in, in, in many ways, that's what I say, um, how a lot of leading Indian banks are engaging their customers right now is actually in many ways um, quite a bit ahead of um, in terms of interactivity with uh, compared to our client base, uh, you know, the large regional banks that we service outside of India, for example, in Southeast Asia or Middle East, right? So there is a case to be made to really take this um, take the solution out. Um, let's keep moving forward. There is a couple of more slides I'll spend time on. Um, so um, one, I talked about the fit fits in perfectly with our, you know, sort of digital offerings in the banking and financial services space. Um, fits in very well from a technology stack standpoint. The revenue profile behaves very, very similar to um, our uh, sort of revenue profile of the software business. Uh, the margin profile in many ways is is at the same level or superior to um, our software businesses, right? And um, we get access to, so there's a lot of shared clients in, in, in India. You know, there's a lot of um, banks that we, we work together with, and I'll come to the client names in a bit. Uh, and then there is a um, access to the insurance client base, which we've traditionally not served. Uh, so we get in, um, we get an entry on the insurance side, and um, hopefully as we progress this, um, the Interact DX um, sort of solution set will get an entry on the banks outside of India that Orion Pro uh, right now services, right? So there is a lot of synergy in terms of expanding the combined base of, of, of both the businesses. Um, let's, let's keep moving forward. A quick glance at the client base that currently interact dx uses so as you can see large banks in india you know whether it's uh, you know you got hdfc you got access you got um, large insurers in in india which is icsa prudential hdfc ergo icsa lombard um, right so some of these are common clients a lot of these are uh, sort of net new um, relationships for us uh, and then there is a sort of increasing presence now of the product in Southeast Asia and Middle East in a small way, as you can see some of the names uh, out there. So hard, for example. Um, so so there is there is an so it's already proven to be useful um, in 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 various use cases in Southeast Asia and Middle East. So the business is very strong in India and and it is already showing signs of being able to expand, which we can really um, accelerate as we as we take over the business. Uh, right. Let's move forward, and uh, so to bring it together, um, you know what what exactly is 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 happening. We will have thirtieth um, of September is is the effective date. Um, the transaction value um, is sort of important to understand that the way this transaction is getting done. Uh, we had um, a set of outstanding, which has been you know so so Trajara one is a related party, so you can see. Um, most of it in the related party disclosures that we would have um, we would have filed anyway. So we had a outstanding for some time in terms of a recoverable um, from Trajara, both both in terms of sort of um, investment as well as receivables, right? Um, overall, so uh, the, that's the approximate value one 140 crores um, out there. The there is no cash that goes out of Orion Flow. We essentially acquire the business and um, uh, for the receivables that we already had from Trajara, uh, right? The revenue last year was approximately 44 crores. It's a very profitable business, um, 44 crores uh, with a sort of EBITDA in the range of 15 crores, right? And 
we essentially uh, settle the receivables that we had from Tejhara in return for it. The business is a strong growing business with 200 employees who will join um, Orion Pro as the transaction closes, right? So that's the transaction in a nutshell. Um, no cash that goes out um, of Orion Pro and the recoverables from Trajhara then get um, settled that we have uh, in return for it, right? So I think that is essentially the, the, the transaction. Um, with that, I will open it up to any questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. We request all the participants to raise the uh, hand, virtual hand, and we will take the questions. Uh, re request you to restrict the questions related to the acquisition release that was made yesterday. Thank you. So the first question so, is from Mr. Sahil. Are you managing this? Yes, I'll do it. So the first question is from Mr. Sahil Sharma. So could you please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question? See some raised hands. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sahil Sharma, please unmute yourself. Uh, sir, we cannot hear you. Okay. Let me so, uh, try and see. So, Sahil, you have a question. Please unmute your mic and go for it. I can't hear the question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sahil Sharma, we cannot hear you. Sir, we cannot hear him as well. Any other participant who would like to ask the question? Okay. Okay, sorry, my speaker had gone mute for some time. Ashpi, did I miss something? So can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, we cannot hear Mr. Sahil Sharma. Sir, could you uh, unmute yourself and try again? Or you can type the question in the chat box as well. Is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? Yeah, Mr. Akshay Gupta, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question. Hi, Ashish. Uh, Ashay here. Uh, what, what sort of synergies do we see from this acquisition uh, playing into the future? And uh, I mean, how would it, uh, how would we see this entity, uh, you know, going forward with this, you know, with this acquisition? Yeah, hi. Hi, Akshay. So, um, good question. Look, uh, for us, synergy from a synergy standpoint on the on the revenue side um, the business you know as as it is i think right now is, is you know it did 45 crores last year it's projecting to 50 this year um, so there is a plan to get that we believe there is a definite market for the product so we have a large client base both in southeast asia as well as middle east as you know um, we believe there is a good market for uh, this solution um, in in terms of those those banks, right? So whether it's Singapore, whether it's Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines. So we intend to um, uh, once the transaction closes, we intend to uh, really go and start having conversations with our existing client base um, around this solution. So that's number one, as well as I suppose the insurance firms in um, in rest of the world. So if we can, um, for example, work with ICSA Prudential in India, can we work with Prudential on a regional or or a global basis? If I can work with uh, you know, uh, HDFC Ergo or Tata EIG, can I actually work with the global parents? Because um, the so that is that is one aspect. The second is we do have, as as you know, some very large global partnerships with um, uh, some enterprise fintech vendors. Uh, you know, which we announced from time to time. You know, whether it's uh, you know a, a few of those which are basically the largest players in Europe and US. Um, so there is a, a sort of definite possibility of expanding into the uh, the bank as well as the insurance base in, in in europe and us over time right so i think the big the where where this comes in for us most importantly is uh, the business has traditionally it doesn't have a global sales team while orion pro has it doesn't have a large global client base while orion pro has and and it's it's a very relevant solution for the time where banks are 
and insurance firms are really focused on improving the level of engagement they have with their clients right and and this essentially is a game changer in terms of uh, converting what is a passive cost um, for the bank into a active interactive revenue generator uh, which is a clear roi we can show to to a prospective client right so i, I believe that brings in a lot of synergy there is a little bit of synergy also on the orient pro um, traditional solution set side because all said and done um, this is a um, this solution has a lot of presence with the very large banks and insurance firms in india and some of those orient pro at the moment does not have a footprint in right so so the orient pro traditional solution set also gains a, a little bit of synergy on the revenue side on the cost side um, we really don't have much overhead in terms of doing it so I, I would not really count on any major synergies on the cost side this is a very profitable business which um, will come into us with practically no additional uh, significant overhead to manage that business so you know it would be um, immediately um, accretive from on the earning side uh, for us, right? So, yeah, hopefully that answers. Thanks, Ashi. Uh, next question is from Mr. Naveen. So, could you please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question? Hello. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, my question is around uh, uh, the product, the kind of product offering from Interactive uh, DX. So, is it a cloud native subscription based uh, offering or the traditional license based offering with some potential for uh, revenue using uh, the services are during the implementation phase can we get some more details on that yeah so uh, good question so we will um, look like with most solution sets on um, uh, in the orient pro stack we will sell in both the modes um, right so we will um, we so typically we will do uh, enterprise on-prem um, sort of deploys um, like we've traditionally done, especially, you know, large banks uh, tend to prefer it as well as we will go um, cloud and we'll go cloud plus um, services as well as we go out to the wider market, right? So so typically, um, and this is true for the entire Orient Pro solution stack, we don't like sitting in a box which, which you know stops the client from using us saying you know the box says SaaS so we only do SaaS or box says enterprise license so we only do enterprise license we would typically when when you work with Orion Pro you would typically have the choice of deployment models and a choice of being between uh, uh, enterprise license and a subscription although these days we increasingly prefer subscription as do our clients but we would be open even to um, you know upfront license models uh, so yeah so that is essentially what you get um, as, as a client right so we will do both the models and we will have exactly the same sort of pricing models and exactly the same um, sort of uh, license models as Orion Pro currently does okay sir thank you and with the existing customers that we have already uh, for the product like what kind of opportunities uh, we can expect uh, going forward so our you know future revenue generation is it purely based on adding the new new clients or uh, can we get some light on that uh, so you mean the incremental revenue additional or, yeah. or future, any yeah. future revenue yeah correct okay so look um, the, the way the model works is the business has a, a fairly high recurring stream uh, right so that um, so you essentially build on top of that recurring stream right because it's a it, in um, it's an ongoing services um, led model as well right so so you would typically have a large chunk coming in as recurring i would believe the recurring stream is slightly stronger than um, if you looked at orion pro software business as a whole right and then we build on top of that and increase incremental revenue comes from two sources one um, i sell uh, more modules to the same client, right? Um, that is number one, uh, as well as I index the price. So every year you sort of increase the price a little bit, right? So that's that's more number one, the existing base. And, and number two, you're totally right, is um, incrementally go and sell more new. Uh, the way most of our businesses work, um, a large chunk of our growth usually comes from the existing base, which is model number one, 
uh, a little bit more in terms of additional modules and service and, and additional indexation. And um, uh, a smaller chunk comes from new sale, at least for the next 12 month period, right? Because it takes time for sales to convert to revenue in our business. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. So, you, uh, yeah. So the next question is from Ms. Krishma Shah. Ma'am, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, good morning to the management team and thanks for uh, taking my question. A uh, couple of questions. One, obviously, this uh, also, uh, you know, ends the issue of receivables uh, with the related party. But uh, one had to understand what kind of improvements will you be able to do incrementally, uh, apart from uh, what you highlighted in terms of synergy, uh, in terms of product offering. And do we also, is it going to cannibalize some of our uh, existing offerings? Uh, that is one. And the other is, are there any low hanging margin levers for this business, uh, which uh, we are uh, looking to explore? Okay, so um, maybe I start in the reverse order first. We don't see any low margin, uh, low, low hanging sort of margin levers right now, right? So I will park that. Uh, in general, this business has slightly better profitability than um, Orion Pro as a whole. So that you know, in that in that sense, it sort of drives the profitability up, you know, like marginally. But uh, we don't see any any cost levers, and that's not the goal of acquiring this business. The goal is to drive growth. Um, the business is quite profitable as it is, uh, operating at about 25% EBITDA margin. So uh, we we intend to uh, keep investing in growing the business rather than rather than try and do much much more to earnings. Um, the 25% or so would contribute directly to Orion Pro's earnings the moment we start close this transaction. So let's say first of October, um, it, it will start contributing to earnings straight away. Uh, the um, the other part is is actually pretty interesting. So um, from the product stack standpoint, we do intend to invest in this model, not so much from the standpoint of adding more functionality. Because you know what you are what you are doing is you are largely operating in a uh, in a functionality sense. You're operating in a box which is fairly well defined, right? So, but what we can do is we do bring in a lot of um, internal uh, sort of skills around, for example, um, conversational AI and, and stuff where we do see the opportunity to add to the product. Second, uh, we do bring in a lot of um, capabilities in terms of understanding of the Southeast Asian and the Middle Eastern market so we can fine tune the product. Uh, incrementally in terms of making the product much more fit for purpose for the markets we go into, whether it's, you know, Vietnam, whether it's Malaysia, whether it's uh, Singapore, right? Uh, so expect the product improvement to happen on those two axes, right? So you are not incrementally adding major functional modules, which are already there, but you are either fine tuning it for a market or you are adding some of the technology stuff we are doing around conversational AI and all, which has a direct fitment into the the communication model, right? So, so I think that that is essentially what will happen. Um, in terms of how does it interact with the rest of the solution stack, this is a net new addition of capability we did not have, right? So it doesn't overlap at all with our current solution stack, but we do have um, an increasing footprint in the digital banking space, and this can become a nice add-on to a digital banking deal in terms of one more aspect of your digital communication with the customer that we can take care of, which traditionally a bank is not thinking about, right? So, so I think in that sense, it can play alongside something we sell, uh, but there is zero overlap. And uh, uh, just to curious to know, this valuation was uh, done independently with a uh, couple of auditors uh, how did the valuation uh, what was what was the basis of valuation yeah so look um it, it's all separate so we did um obviously we did uh we used uh fairly reputed independent valuers to to help us in assessment of value of this so we we did um uh, valuation exercises independently um the number that you see out there it's it's not the final number because that's subject to you know audit and all that stuff uh, but it's essentially the recoverable uh, number so we we don't pay any um, additional cash 
um, we do it in return for the receivables we had from Trejhara, right? Um, I would say uh, from a value standpoint, this is um, enormous value to the Orient Pro shareholder um, overall, right? Now you can, um, I, I would say everyone can have their own assessment of value. We have fairly reputed independent valuers give us an opinion, uh, which typically is a, a, you know, a valuation number um, significantly better than the 140 crores that, that you see out there. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have a couple of questions in the chat box. I'll uh, read them. Uh, there are two questions from Mr. Sahil Sharma. What sort of cross-selling opportunities do we have for this product across our set of non-India clients? And the second question is, can you please outline the breakup of the 140 crore transaction? What is the number for Trejara receivables and what is the number for other current assets just so that we can just juxtapose the transaction onto our FI23 balance sheet, would this settle all the Trejara outstanding dues? Okay, uh, perfect. So Sahil, I think I already answered the question on cross sell, so I will sort of skip that. I mean, if there is a further uh, angle that I did not cover, then please, please um, ask the question again. Uh, but cross sell, essentially, we take it to um, uh, our global client base. We did not have this capability, so it gives us a net new capability to sell to our existing clients and slightly smaller cross sell. Um, we take Orion Pro's solution stack to the uh, Interact DX clients who we don't already have a footprint with, right? So that's basically, I, I covered that in some, some length. Uh, coming to the second question, um, the breakup of the 140 crore. So these are essentially, we would have published this, um, right? So this is related party. Um, sort of uh, this, uh, thing we would have, we would have uh, published. Uh, basically, it's a combination of um, a, a small amount of investment that was there and um, essentially the other receivables in the form of loans and advances, which are all declared out there, right? So um, it's essentially, so that 140 crore, as I said, is a approximate number. It won't be more than 140 crores, but, but there's some um, element of foreign exchange and all that stuff. So, so it, it would be approximately that number. Uh, that is the total outstanding due. So yes, this settles all the Trejhara outstanding due. So basically, we will have no linkage to Trejhara through any balance sheet item after we do this, right? So basically, all the receivables, everything due um, and has been recovered uh, through this transaction. The next question is from Ms. Ankita Rathi. Uh, so what is the top line that you are expecting to add this year by this acquisition in FI24 and FI25? And will the EBITDA margin be maintained that the company had previously? Okay. So, uh, okay, multiple questions there, right? From a top line standpoint, this business did 45 crores last year. This year, the planned number for the business is 50 crores. I would say we will at least do um, the 45 that's last year. And, and what we hear from the management of that business is they're planning to hit 50 this year, right? So we will, um, uh, before the transaction closes, I'm not in a position to give any uh, qualification on that number. So I would say it's at least 45 um, that we should expect in uh, this financial year for that business to do. Um, on the... Um, uh, profitability side, as I said, the margins are slightly better than Orion Pro as a whole, um, right? So um, we should expect uh, a 25% odd um, uh, of the of the top line coming in as a bit uh, in, into the business, right? Um, did I miss some part of the question? Oh yeah, 25. Yeah, so FY25, I'm I'm not going to get into guiding for future years because I, I think it's fundamentally unfair that we don't guide for Orion Pro as a whole FI25 and I guide for this small part, right? So we'll, we'll leave it, but we have uh, significant growth plans for the business. Uh, we intend to keep driving um, growth through our entire solution portfolio and which going forward will include this one as well. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Venkate Swarlu. How many customers it has? Are you already working together with any of the customers? If so, which product of Orient Pro is integrated with Interact DX? What was its growth rate in the last three years? What is the growth rate expected for this product in the next couple of years? And what is the amount of outstanding payments from Trajara? Is there any pending outstanding? 
Sorry, that last part I, I did not get. So what was that outstanding? What is the amount of outstanding payments from Trajara? Is there any out pending outstandings? OK, so um, look, um, the total of the investments plus the outstanding payments is of the order of that 140 crore number that we published. That 140 crore is the absolute sort of um, high case in terms of what that number is, depending on foreign exchange conversions and stuff, right? So that is basically it. Um, so that is total. Is there anything outstanding from Tejhara? That is, so there was an outstanding in terms of recoverable and there was the investments. We recovered everything. So after this transaction closes, there will be nothing outstanding from Tejhara, right? That's basically the, um, the, the transaction in a nutshell. Um, what um, we are, so there are customers that we are working uh, with who also happen to be uh, customers of Interact DX, right? Are we really working closely together in the sense that an Orient Pro solution is, is tightly integrated to the Interact DX? Uh, not really, um, not that I can think of right now anyways. Uh, so we are not right now in sort of working with them in any major way. After the transaction closes, uh, we do have a lot of ideas around where we can work together because there is a set of common clients and there is a set of clients that are, you know, sort of strong clients for Orient Pro, but not for Interact, uh, strong clients for Interact, but not for Orient Pro, right? So, so we do have those lists identified where immediately after the uh, the transaction closes, the sales teams and the solution teams can get together and and, and start looking at what are those cross leverage opportunities, right? Um, yeah. And so the question on what was the growth rate in the last three years? What is the growth rate okay. expected for this product? Yeah, so look, growth rate has been sort of not very high, uh, not comparable to the Orion Pro um, growth rate in the past. Uh, so the business has grown in the range of 10 odd percent the last few years, uh, while, of course, as you know, Orion Pro has been growing at the range of 30 odd percent. Um, our plan would be to really step up um, the sales effort on the solution. We feel very good about um, how well it can sell in the global markets as well as where we can expand in the Indian market. Um, so, so I do believe um, in sort of medium term for the solution to get up to the Orient Pro uh, uh, sort of growth level, which is, um, you know, at least drive it up to uh, something in the range of 25 to 30 percent. Right. But uh, that is probably a medium to long term uh, sort of view in the short term. The business has grown at um, eight to 10 percent. So I think that's that's what you should expect in the short term. OK. So the next question is from Mr. Uh, Vivek Gautam. Is this acquisition EPS accurate from day one? Few pointers on that rationale, please. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Well, so from um, basically, uh, you know, if you just look at it roughly, um, if you look at last year, right? So you're saying 45 crores. You're saying 45 crores, and then um, a bit die in the range of uh, 15 crores, uh, right? So we basically expect to make that the moment we take over this is um a net new addition to the abidda stream that orion pro has right so it is immediately accredited in that sense um i i don't know what more detail i can provide but basically you know expect it to contribute day one so uh, yeah basically um the, the nutshell of the transaction is very simple right we recover what was due to us for many years from uh, from the entity uh, it was sitting on the balance sheet for some time, so we recover against those items. There is no cash. Um, there is zero cash that leaves Orient Pro. And uh, the, once the business comes in, the EBITDA is immediately accretive, right? So that's basically the transaction in nutshell. I, I, I mean, it's, it seems it, it's straightforward, I think. Yeah. So we'll take the next question from Mr. Mayur Damani. Sir, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Uh... Orient Pro management means uh, I'm glad to hear this that uh, in the markets also means uh, it is being told that Mr. Ashish Rai and team they are the real catalyst of uh, Orient Pro's uh, next journey that is towards 2030. So this is uh, maybe a few of the initial steps. So congratulations on that. And uh, my question is related to this uh, 140 crore uh, valuation. 
So how did we arrive at the valuation of this 140 crores? Means is it that we had uh, recoverables to the extent of 140 and we adjusted to that value of 140 and uh, let me just uh, recover this and then capitalize based on Orient Pro strengths from here on. Means just wanted to know the valuation. How did we arrive at the valuation of 140? Yeah, so I think that is essentially it, right? I think it is the sum total of the um, recoverables that we um, uh, we, we had uh, from from Tajara. We we did independent valuation exercise as well, um, right? And 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 I've told you the sort of um, the EBITDA levels of the business. So so I think there is there is a market benchmark for those as well. Um, and, and those were um, uh, you know kind of a little bit higher than the 140 crore number. Uh, for this, but 140 is is essentially what uh, is the sum total of the recoverables and the investments we had in Tajara. Okay, thank thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. So we have one question in the chat box from Mr. Bhavik Mehta. How big the business can be in terms of revenue over the next three to four years? How much additional investment would it entail? So look, we it's it's hard to size it at the moment so that i've got sort of i'm a little bit conflicted on this one I, we don't give long term guidance so um i i would sort of park it the second is um we don't even uh, we've not sized so we have a projection um we believe we can bring the business up to the 25 to 30% growth benchmark that we have as an enterprise Right. Uh, so um, we don't give any forward guidance. So I'm not going to start in this call. Um, right. But we plan to get all our businesses to that level of growth. We strongly believe this business can get to that kind of growth. Um, right. For this year, we probably should expect high single digits to 10 percent, but um, medium to long term, uh, our endeavor would be to drive that yes. level of growth. We, we believe the size of the market for a solution like this is very, very large, um, right? So because what you are talking about is something, one fundamental to what an insurance firm or a bank needs to do, first of all, in, in today's day and age. That's number one. Second, you, you're talking about a ROI case where we can prove almost instantly the ROI that is involved in this. Because what, what we are saying is, um, if, if you have a passive instrument going out to the customer, which is essentially just a cost element for you at the moment, we can convert that into a revenue earner for you, right? Uh, so which, which you know, kind of completely um, changes the ROI. The third is, um, we believe the value of the offering in global markets is far more than um, so by value, I mean the, the prices at which you sell. We believe that can be far more than um, what we sell in the Indian market. Right. So and which is not something unique to this solution. That is something we've seen across our solution stack. Uh, the realization that you get from the solution stack in, in in markets outside of India tend to be better than um, what you get in India. So even on that element, we believe the average unit prices will go up as we go out and we expand expand globally right so we believe this is a very very large segment um, we think we can bring the growth rate up to 25 to 30 percent without needing uh, any major new products right so coming to the r d question um, we are not going so we've got a philosophy around r d which i've been very clear about in in in, in previous calls as well um, number one uh, we try to get to seven to eight percent of the top line at the moment in terms of r d um, which is where we are trying we're trying to do we don't capitalize it uh, we will expense it out because we believe the businesses that we do fundamentally are that profitable we can deliver our EBITDA ranges after we expense out the seven to eight percent r d we expect this business to be at the same level in terms of r d so that's not uh, significant enough to come out with newer products but that's meaningful enough for us to incrementally fine-tune it for newer markets that we go to and, and hence the stance that uh, we're not creating net new functionality but we are fine-tuning it for more markets we believe that is where the uh, sort of revenue upside is right so so that's what it would be and the long-term philosophy we have on R&D again we've sort of stated that many times is we believe all our businesses will get more and more profitable as we progress in time 
we will try to keep the enterprise EBITDA at the levels it is, and any excess that we get, we will pour it back into R&D, right? Which means uh, incrementally as the business grows, there will be more and more available for R&D. Um, and, and, and hence, you know, then you the, the pot sort of increases over time for the business to sort of keep incrementally investing in R&D. We, we believe that's sort of, um, at least that is the model that we follow. Now, I, I've heard, I've heard um, sort of debates on it and, um uh, it's it's one of those areas where you know whatever you are prepared to invest um product is a business where you can invest you know uh, there is no end to what you can invest right so we have no intention of becoming a you know a, a startup style you know keep investing and in a kind of thing we will say seven to eight percent keep pouring it back keep coming up with incremental functionality and and that drives enough um, growth for the business The last question we'll take uh, from Mr. Siddharth Nikunj Daga, uh, whether the product is scalable other than the BFSI sector, if so, what shall be the other target sectors and are there any similar players in the same product? Yeah, so um, both um, excellent questions. So I think from a solution suite standpoint, it is scalable to any business which has a lot of retail um, customers that you know you need to interact with for example the solution has been used in 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 uh, telco uh, sort of use cases as well right uh, the immediate global focus would however be to sort of specialize around banking and insurance space and 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 double down there i believe that's enough to drive the growth but it can extend to um, uh, many other segments essentially any segment which interacts because you know things like um, digital statements, bills, monthly uh, statements, uh, invoice, sort of um, not invoices, but you know, essentially uh, even even invoices, even marketing communication, and all uh, wherever that's needed, you can actually have a central hub to take it out. Um, so so it, it is it is possible, but we can drive enough um, global sort of uh, expansion through the banking and insurance cases, and then we say, okay, um, uh, what are the other sec sectors that we can do something about? Um, are there similar players? So there are similar players, but uh, there are many ways of um, achieving the same objective. Uh, we believe we have a superior model to deliver a interactive communication to the client through a product as well as a services led sort of offering so i believe we are very unique in a way that um, we we take care of the product we take care of the fine tuning of the product we take care of the actual running of the communication with the client integration with the clients sort of you know core banking system whatever else it needs to interact with uh, as well as run it like a service right uh, so you uh, i mean everyone does some level of customer communication right we believe we got a superior product and service offering together which makes us like truly unique um, in in the space hopefully that helps thank you sir that was the last question if you could like to give some closing remarks okay good uh, so um, first of all thank you everyone for joining this call um, my goal from the call was very simple. One, it's a transaction with a related entity. And, and as, as I've been very clear in the past, we want to um, you know, run the setup in a way that there is maximal transparency to the shareholders. So it was important and uh, for, for, for me to sort of um, explain the whole transaction. So thank you for taking the time to listen to it. Um, very, very excited about where this could go for us. Um, I think the deal is incredibly value adding to the Orion Pro share, shareholder day one. Um, but I believe the future of this offering inside Orion Pro is very, very bright and we can grow this business in a very strong way. Uh, we can extend our value proposition to the banks and the that we work with in a in a very material way. Um, and we get a foothold in the insurance business, which which we always wanted, right? Because I think that's the next sort of access for um, expansion in, in our solution sets. Uh, it's a large segment. Uh, we wanted a play in that segment, and, and this sort of gives us uh, a good entry point into several um, very well-known uh, players, right? So in, in every possible way, uh, this achieves um, it, you know all the objectives we had and also sort of completely delinking 
um, the balance sheet uh, from the related entity and, and recovering uh, more importantly an outstanding which was um, due to us for um, quite some time um, right in a in a highly sort of value adding way so I, I believe this is this is a win win uh, transaction this is extremely positive for us as a firm in 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 many many ways and and incredibly sort of value adding to the Orient Pro shareholder. Um, so yeah, we feel we feel very excited about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you everyone for joining the call. With this, we end the conference.